Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's wild. We're both on the screen at the same time. Yeah. Oh, So we're wow. basically okay. playing a, uh, our own game, but we're sharing a game. Okay. So the thing is, if I unpause, it unpauses for you as well. And if you like put up to maximum speed, it does for me as well. So that always stays synced. Okay. And then, so like if I zoom out, are you now zoomed out? No, no. We have okay. our own okay. independent cameras. Like okay. one of the things, uh, when I sort of first watched a video of people playing this with multiplayer, the first thing they said they were going to do is they, had, they started with nine people. They were going to split off into three groups and have just take three people each and do their own things. Like one guy over here makes stone bricks and some, another guy over here do the food and some other guy over here starts making, I don't know, clothes or something. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that was a cool idea. That you was a neat idea, basically yeah. Basically enables you to do that. Sure. So, right, the basics. All the stuff you can see on the floor there is the stuff we've specified to start with. Now, um, you'll see there's X's. Right. X's. This is basically forbidding anybody from touching it. Anybody who's in their right mind, people who are mental breaks, can just do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, which is not much. handy it's not <laughs> handy at all especially when you have a load of drugs and they decide they want to go on a binge and take a crap load of yayo and end up addicted and then suddenly have another break because they haven't got any yayo to take anymore and yeah it just yeah drugs are very valuable but as you can imagine all they do is bring chaos and destruction i.e real life okay yeah i mean it really is even just smoke leaf which is obviously weed I and mean, that ends up being detrimental to everyone because they end up working slower and get angry when you haven't got any for them and yeah but then there's other drugs that are really useful when you're under attack like um what's it called uh wake up it's like cocaine it's it, they all have their own the one of them looks like pills one of them looks like a big bag of white stuff and it's kind of you know you can <laughs> relate them to what they're meant to right be, but yes one yes of, i think it's i think it's wake up it gives them like extra strength and speed and accuracy and it makes them like super soldiers um, and then there's luciferium that is probably the the most interesting drug i think it's uh, uh basically if you get them on a prescription of luciferium it will heal them in ways that other things can't like they can even get healed brain damage and healed broken bones uh, like permanently broken stuff that's hindering their movement but if they if you don't uh, keep up their prescription they end up turning into a berserking raging monster <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah there's a cool write-up on it on the description for it but anyway yes i'm i'm uh, deteriorating from the point so our first mission is to keep to get them undercover and in a bed so they okay. can have somewhere to sleep for the night so they don't sleep they end up sleeping on the floor just somewhere random and they get a negative mood bonus for it so let's let's first of all let's have a look at our people we're not going to play the game yet we're just gonna go over so if you click at the top there you can yep. see the names if you click <laughs> jupiter you see at the bottom left you've got these yes. tabs log gear social bio needs and health there's so much information in here so log will tell you about all the interactions that individual has had and with who done what and so if you find oh my god there's been a big fight you can then pause the game and go over them all and see what actually happened like who jipped off who and who punched who in the face because of it and all that. <laughs> that's awesome um, and that goes for the animals as well you can see their logs so if a dog's been attacked by a random wild oh. animal you can see who did it sort of thing what what caused it uh so then you've got gear which is obviously what they're carrying and what kind of attributes that gives them like got sharp blunt and heat that's uh depending on their ability to fight and their clothing insulation okay so also that how much they can carry how much they are carrying um and what comfortable what temperature is most comfortable for that individual some of them have traits where they prefer to be in cold or they're happy to be in cold or the opposite uh, so then social is their relationships with everybody that they've ever met oh okay so the, first, the brighter number is their opinion of that person and the one next to it is their that opinion's person of them. So green is obviously good, red is they've got issues with each other. <laughs> you can have rivalries and things like that. But then they could so, also have weddings and divorces and oh, all wow. sorts. Okay, so like on your... Um, now I can't remember how I got... Oh, social. 
down yeah. at the bottom in the log, t does your log say the same thing as mine where Reese and Jupiter quipped about training bats? Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> they had a little. They, they were they were joking about uh, training, but they're probably talking about something rude. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Spanking paddles, probably. Ping pong table balls. Sorry, table tennis. That's it. <laughs> anyway, so let's get to bio. So this is a very handy one. This tells you all of their skills, and all of these skills here can be uh, trainable just by them practicing it. Basically, um, you might see little flames next. Right. To yeah, like animals. Yeah, that's basically, if they don't have a flame there, they will learn the skill at 35% normal rate. If they have a little flame there, it means that they're interested in that skill, and they'll learn at 100%. Oh, I see. If they have two flames there, it means they have a burning passion for doing that, and they'll learn at something like 150%, because they absolutely love it. It interests them to high heaven. So it's oh, worth, I see. It's yeah, worth so... considering training people. If they want to train in something, get them doing mm -hmm. it, because they'll learn it very quickly. So the android is very interested in shooting. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, that's why I chose him actually because that that was shoot up absolute. No, excuse the pun. <laughs> so also, the thing to look at is the backstory and um, also their traits and incapable ofs, because these can be quite uh, a game changer. Like the trait pyromaniac. This is such an annoying trait. I don't think any of ours have them, no. But that means that sometimes they'll just go around starting fires. They're only little, but if there's nobody there to put them out, they can end up like causing irreparable damage. So let's see. Jupiter has a jealous trait, which means if she doesn't have the best or most beautiful bedroom, she will get a mood um, penalty. But if she does, she'll get a mood bonus. So if you just give her some extra plant pots and some furniture she'll be happy basically as long as no one else is better <laughs> nervous that means uh yeah she's more likely to break from um you know being stressed out only eight percent so it's not too bad body purist she is against um artificial like prosthetics there is a prosthetist i think it is where the person won't have a negative mood bonus until you give them something bionic or prosthetic so yeah, a lot of the traits have opposite sides. Like this guy or this girl, sorry. You, if you give her a prosthetic leg, she would have a negative mood bonus from it. And what's the other one? Oh, no incapable of. Sometimes they're incapable of dumb labor, which means they won't haul or clean or flick switches for you, which is annoying. But uh, Well, yeah, so I, I just I clicked on Reese, and Reese is incapable of cooking and plant work. Yeah, that sucks. But... Um, Oh, it's also nervous, but uh, the, the optimist one's good. It means it kind of almost evens out the nervous one, actually. Because they're basically the same thing, but you want your mood to be high to prevent a mental break, so. Um, okay, so it's, basically... It's a, little, it's a little scary that our android is trigger-happy and nervous and optimistic at the same time. That's, yeah. That dude's a mess, the, man. <laughs> What's that guy's? What's that old film with a paranoid android? Ah, oh, is it Lost in Space or something? Oh no! Uh, 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 Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Was it? Is, is that the, the one you're thinking of? The uh, paranoid Mar android. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvin, isn't it? Was, isn't, Marvin, wasn't, that's it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow. That's Marvin. We should change his name to Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so best first thing to do is okay. to decide who's going to need weapons and who's not. So we check our bio for them, and we can see that uh, they could all do with a gun. Sometimes you have, like, pessimists, and if you give them a gun, they'll get a negative effect from it. They don't like being forced to be, you know, armed. So we've got assault rifles, machine pistols... Uh, machine pistols you can dual weld because they're only one-handed weapons, but assault rifles are two-handed, so you can only hold one. Okay. But assault rifles are the best, so I think we should just stick with them. So, sure. Um, you can assign them um, stuff to do without them. Oh, so hang on. Let me explain drafting. So, if you like, currently these are all undrafted, which means they are basically just doing their day-to-day -day thing. Okay. Uh, they're not looking to return fire or be in a, a fight right now so um you can select someone and then right click on something 
and tell them to do stuff like equip things, but that's about it. So if we get them all to equip a machine gun, so you don't have to worry about the little X. If you're specifically telling them to do something with it, it will then automatically take the X off of it. So yeah, if you tell them all to pick up a, an assault rifle for each. Okay. So do you want me to do that? Yeah. Or go are you going to do this? So oh, okay. Just, just one by one. Make sure yep. you select different guns each time. Obviously. Right, right, right. The third one. The where is it? Is there another one somewhere? I'll just unpause it. Yeah, I don't know where the there other... There is a third one somewhere. Uh, um... Is it there? No. Or maybe I only pack two. Okay, let's pause again. Right, okay. That's cool. We can have... Uh, Raven okay, wait, so... One. Reese has got... can give him that one. Jupiter... I oh, I guess there were three. Uh, okay. I, I only saw... Like, maybe there were two on top of each other. Oh, is, that, yeah. is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, I think... Oh, well, no, it shouldn't be. Oh, okay. But, right, well. okay. Hmm. Anyway. So, pause again. Now we know they're armed. Um, oh, yeah, remember to look between shooting and melee. If they're not good at shooting, just give them a knife or a club or something, because that's... They're going to be more effective like that. But melee does mean they're getting the thick of it and they're more likely to die. You want to try and always use guns over melee if you can. So, yeah, you can get some damage done before they actually get to you and lock you in melee combat. As soon as you're locked in melee combat, you can't shoot your guns. It's down to fists. Sure. Okay, so at the moment, pretty much all of this stuff is outside and will be deteriorating. Right. Things like steel and silver and slag and stone they don't but anything like medicine food wood weapons armor things like that they will deteriorate so we need to make a spot for them to stay dry and uh, uh not become uh, nothing basically okay so uh, if we look over here we can see lots of nice little cave here with some mushrooms we'll play that's on a it. pretty sweet little cave actually oh, okay all right i see so i was thinking if we like block here and put a door and just use in here as our storage room. See here, we've got a bunch of compacted steel as well we can use for mining. So, okay. Um, if we wanted to, right, that's getting ahead of ourselves again. Um, right, I've, I explained drafting because I did start that. So, say we wanted to shoot this ibex doe over here. Okay. We could set it to be hunted, and whenever they get round to hunting, they'll hunt it. But we could also put it into draft. So. If you select her and then press the draft button at the bottom. The little swords here. Okay. Yep. That's now, you see the little drums. That's now put her into fighting mode. She will okay. not move anywhere unless you tell her to. So if you forget you've left her drafted, she could starve to death or go into a mental <laughs> break just standing there, basically. I made that mistake <laughs> so much when I started. Oh, my. Okay. So, so if, basically now she'll behave like you'd expect, say, in a game like Command and Conquer. So you can point and click and tell her to just go somewhere oh yeah she'll go there if you press shift you can queue up uh, a route so she'll go between oh, places oh that's cool and if you right click on something you can choose to fire and she'll attack but she won't pursue in draft mode if she's hunting it she'll pursue it so yeah that's drafting but yes just remember to undraft them afterwards okay <laughs> So many times I've found him standing out in the rain in the middle of nowhere, just stood there waiting. Okay, so since we're in multiplayer, basically in the same game, then you were able to undraft her, even though I had drafted her. Yeah, we can do okay, anything that's each cool. other yeah. can do. So we awesome. can annoy right. each other with stuff. But yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I will be annoying you way more than you'll <laughs> be annoying me. <laughs> You're going to be like, Dave, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, so ideally, because we want this space, because it's uh -huh. basically right here. Hang on. Um, if you put your mouse just up here on uh -huh. the grass okay. and have nothing selected, at the bottom left of the screen, you should see some yep. faint white writing. Yep. See that it's grass, it's half grown, it's soil on the floor, and it's brightly lit. Yep. And if you put it in here, oh, yeah. you'll see we've got an overhead mountain, which means there's a roof. Now, in the bottom right here, you'll see a bunch of icons with X's uh -huh. and ticks. The top right one, toggle vis visibility to roofs. If you put that on, that basically shows 
in green everywhere that is covered. Oh, that's above. cool. Light yeah. green is by one layer. Dark green means it's a really thick upper layer. So that's a mountain there. Okay. So that's telling us that is actually a cave. So if you untick that now, because you don't want to leave that tick. Oh, like... right, because it could have been just a valley. Yeah, yeah. If it, could it didn't have, been have a roof. I got you. Okay, but, I'm um, with you. So first things first, I think we need to build a wall and a door just to okay. corner, cor cordon it off. All right. And... Oh, auto save. Okay. But before we do that, we'll have to allow them to use some of these materials. Sure. So okay. if you select something with a double click, it will select everything of that type All right. on, on the screen currently. And if you press ah. F, it will un unallow it. There so now, it, it, should it come to their mind to be necessary, they will take those to where they needed to be. Right now, there's nowhere they needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, but also, if you do the same, I'll do the same for the s silver. The uh, I've just done it for the steel as well, and the rest of the stuff. All, all of this can now be allowed. Okay, like even this food so, over here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Say though you were making fresh food and you didn't want them to eat these packaged survival meals, you'd leave them in storage with an X on them, so they would not eat them unless it's an emergency. Because these don't go off; they last forever. Oh, okay. Whereas fresh food only lasts so long. Oh, okay. Okay, so now they're allowed to use the building stuff. We can actually uh, put a wall in. So if we go to architect at the bottom mm -hmm. and then structure, mm -hmm. see we've got doors, walls, and bridges. Okay. So and we, we want use a steel. wall. Uh, if you hold, click, and then hold your mouse over it, don't hold the mouse button, but hold your mouse over wall and then select steel wall since they're a lot stronger and not flammable. Okay. And then you should be able to draw. Um, just a line like that. Now, right there? Oh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah, I'm making then, a wall. Okay. That's it. And then do the same for door. Get a steel door and just sort of put it in the middle here. You can place doors on top of walls already existed. You yeah, don't have and to then, delete the wall, which is handy. And then that lays the blueprint for the item, and then once we go live, then they'll attempt to build yeah. that. Yep. But okay. first, firstly, we need to have a look at the work priorities. Okay. So the second tab at the bottom so is work. Work. Okay. Now you see a bunch of ticks. Now I always uh, go one step further. We see where it says manual priorities. X. Yes. Click that X to a tick. Okay. You'll see they've changed to the numbers. So the ticks basically mean you either do that job or you don't. But with the numbers, it specifies what priority you'll do that job. Oh, yeah, yeah. So from okay. left to right, it goes from left to right by number. So it will do everything that's tagged number one. Then it will go across again, tag, uh, do everything that's tagged number two, and so on. So at sure. the moment, it's just even. It's just threes. Sure. I like to put firefighting to one always so that if there's any fires in the home area, the first thing to do is drop everything and go and put it out. Okay. Uh, patient also, which means... Um, if they're injured for something life-threatening, they have to go straight to the doctor, to the bed, to be healed. They won't stop and do something else and bleed to death or something stupid. Doctoring, <laughs> also, I keep at one, to the one that person that is actually... Oh, no, we've got two, two good people that are doctors. So we'll have Ju Jupiter as second priority there. Okay. Bed rests, I'll leave it two. Basic, we'll leave it two. Basic is stuff like... Say you wanted to turn off a bunch of power generators. You can't just turn them off yourself. You have to set them to be turned off. And then when somebody gets around to it, they'll go in and they'll turn off the power for all the stuff. Oh, okay. And basic includes things like that. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Warden is the guy that uh, looks after prisoners and goes in and talks with them and uh, also euthanizes them if you so request. <laughs> but uh, wardens need high uh, social skill levels and also... Uh, melee, I think, helps. We haven't actually got anyone that's good for wardening. You see some of them have red squares. Yeah, on that's them. what I was looking at, yeah. That means their skill level's very low, and they're probably going to be rubbish at doing that. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, I see when you hover over it, it gives you a warning. Mm -hmm. The average of relevant skills is very low, so okay. Yeah. So then we got Handle, which is basically animals. Uh, training them, feeding them, and healing them. So we, we're Use those two guys for that because they're, in fact, they're all 
Oh no, Reese is terrible. So, okay, cooking. Oh, it's unfortunate that we've only got one level three cook, but that's a priority job. So we'll put that above wardening um, and above handling, I think, because you must keep on top of food, obviously, whilst they're going to die. Yes, that, well, that, well, that would be a problem. So for hunting, I'm going to put Reese on uh, because he's only level three, but he had the burning passion for shooting, so he'll skill up a lot through that. So we'll have these two hunting. Construction, Reese is also very good. Mining, Reese. And then the rest is kind of later on stuff. Okay. Oh, we haven't got whole urgently. Oh, that was a really good mod. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> right, so hauling and cleaning <laughs> are kind of things you have to really keep on top of as well because if everything is dirty, people get um, mood defects from being surrounded by filth. Okay. So you kind of want to always have someone assigned as cleaning or have it so once every two or three days, you just have them all clean all day, like a spring clean sort of thing. Sure. Weekly spruce up. That's right. Okay. Um, Okay, so for now, I think they're, they're all fine. So basically, it just allows you to be more definitive on what what you want them to be doing. And you can obviously fine-tune it as you go, and believe me, you will. Okay. So now, we know that someone's going to construct, because we haven't told him to hunt. So yeah, he should start building that wall now. So if we unpause the game and let the magic unfold... But uh, yes, there's plenty more to explain. So they're not going to move and store any of this stuff without somewhere specified to store it. So, um, right, we'll leave it playing whilst he builds the ball. Under Architect, you'll find Orders. Now this gives you a huge list of commands ranging from uh, cutting down trees to hunting animals to stripping clothes off of dead bodies. So we want to click Mine. You see here, we'd have to mine this square to get past it. Right. We're actually gonna, we're actually going to need all of this, so we're just going to select all of that. So whenever someone gets to priority of mining, they'll come and mine this stuff. Okay, and so only, you only this stuff because that's you all clicked on mine and then just dragged a square around it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And my square didn't show up just because you've already done it. So okay. yeah. So I'll just about to write my name. I was just going to say, you can have them mine your name. Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. Right, so we need to put down a zone. Now, zones are specifying where you want stuff done in areas. So under zone, we want a stockpile zone. And then just want to lay it out. I'll delete that so you can put it down. A stockpile zone, okay. Yeah, and if we use this as our like little Aladdin's cave... Oh, that's cool that it just only fills in the spots. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So I don't know how far down you want to go. That's, that's fine. So by default now, if you click on that um, stockpile zone, it should highlight it. And then if you click the storage button at the bottom left, it'll come uh, up with a list. Storage. Now this hang is on. a list of every single item in the game. Uh, hang on, I don't have worst storage. Have you got the stockpile zone selected? Uh-huh. And it just says zone. Oh, storage. There's a little, okay, little button on top. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, by default, it uh, starts these zones as um, uh, normal priority and everything selected. So if you, um, for your first stockpile zone, that's the ideal thing, because there are no other stockpile zones for them to worry about, and they will just move everything on the map that you have allowed them to into that area. Okay. But at the moment, if you put your mouse over it with nothing uh -huh. else selected, right. and look at the little white writing at the bottom left, you'll see... Oh, sorry, the other side, bottom right. It'll say the time of day, and then below that it'll say outdoors, 20 degrees C, or F. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. yes, I see that. Outdoors means that it's currently, a lot of it's still going to deteriorate because the wind's blowing through. We've cordoned off this wall, but, but above here you'll see they're getting right. through here. So we need to put another wall and a door here. All right, and then there's also then, one at the bottom. Oh, yeah. You do the top one, I'll do the bottom one. Okay. So, architect, structure, I need a steel wall, and, hmm, I so guess we'll maybe, just... Yeah, I think, yeah. I guess just across Minimal. here. 
that work? And then a door. Yeah. Now, um, Whoops. as soon as you've uh, built the surroundings of something, they will then automatically okay. start laying any roofs that it's missing. Well, it does when you build a normal square sort of room out of walls. Right. You can actually force them to build roofs. In fact, you can force them to build like extended roofs. So you can okay. build like a like a porch here. So oh yeah, yeah. Roof comes out. Okay. So if you go to zone and then build roof area, you could do something like that. Uh, and now they'll come along and just build a little bit of roof there, so it's sheltered. Okay, that's cool. So we can do the same thing here. Why are you mining, Reese? You should be building. So if someone's doing something that they shouldn't be doing, but they're finishing off doing that before they're going to start what you want them to do, you could draft them and undraft them, just bish bash, and then they'll go, oh, right, next job, I'm doing that now. Sort of refresh their memory sort of thing. Okay, I'm sorry. Say that again. I, I missed. If, um, for instance, there, Reese was still mining, even though I wanted him to go constructing. Uh huh. And because I changed his priorities, but because... He's mining. He was going to carry on mining until he'd finished. Before then, realizing, oh, well, now I need to build. So if you just click draft to put them into fight mode and then off again, just sort of ah, double click it. Okay. Then they refresh their sort of sort of what they're doing, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm constructing. <laughs> oh, I just remember what I was saying. Yeah, right, quick slap. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pay attention. What's the matter with you? Yeah. Okay. So. We need to get this cave done, and then we need to start getting food for our creatures. Because the cows can eat um, the grass, but the chickens and the dogs can't. Okay. The chickens and the dogs need... In fact, the chickens might die, actually, if we don't get around to... Basically, Poor you can chicken. make kibble. You use um, a butcher's table to mix meat with uh, hay and veg vegetable stuff, and you make kibble, and that keeps them going. Oh. Um, but we're not quite there yet. And so, <laughs> at the risk of sounding, I don't know, non-PC or whatever, um, like, can you build chicken pens or whatever and you put all the chickens in the pen? Or oh, no, yes. they're just free-ranging yep. and that's it? That's a good segue while we're waiting for these to build to explain um, areas. So, right now... Um, we don't want our animals just roaming anywhere on the map because somebody could come onto the map and abduct them or murder them or whatever and I, we, we wouldn't be able to get out there fast enough so we want to keep them in like an area and I normally build like a little shed for them and have that area in the shed and then have a route that comes out to a grazing area once okay. they've grazed there for a while they might have eaten all the grass and so then you need to move the grazing area and let the previous one regrow so you have to think about that sometimes especially when you have a lot of animals Sure. But uh, so we need to go and set up an area. So if we go to restrict at the bottom, uh huh, you'll see this brings up their schedule. The blue is what hours they're asleep, and the grey is what hours they're awake. Okay. I normally leave these on anything, and let them sleep when they want. Uh, sometimes you have people with the trait night owl, and if you force them to sleep in the day, then they'll be happier. Because they're a night owl. If you don't, if you have them sleeping at night, they will get a mood uh, penalty for it. Oh, okay. Uh, but I generally just leave them to go to sleep whenever they want. Okay, so manage areas is the button we actually want on the restrict bar. Okay. So you see area one. That's just yes. your first default area. So okay. if we rename that and put cows. Okay. So it's still not actually an area yet because we haven't specified it, but that's what we're going to call it. So sure. under zone, up there, under architect, go to zone and expand allowed area. It will come up with a list of your areas, home and cows. If you click cows and then you can drag a space. And this is basically telling it where is this wow. area. Wow. Okay. It's this. Yeah, yeah. And you can clear allowed area to minimize it down. If you need to. Okay. Uh, now, if we go to animals, we can see all of our pets here. Uh, we've got okay. three cows, three roosters. Oh, that's no good. They're definitely going to die. We've got no hens to make eggs. Oh, well. And uh, yeah, you see they're allowed areas. They're all currently unrestricted. So for the cows, if we select them to be... Oh, that's roosters. We'll select roosters and cows to be 
only in that area. So now they will not come out of that area. They'll roam oh, free. Oh, yeah, I see. They're all so, they're all heading there now. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so you can make them stay in their shed and it's it's important because sometimes dogs will just walk around the house and they'll go into people's bedrooms while they're asleep and disturb their night's sleep and then they get up in a bad mood. Ah. So you have to watch out for that. And other people can just walk in people's bedrooms and <laughs> yeah. They don't like it sometimes. It doesn't always disturb them, but it's good that it that it can do. Okay. Okay, this is going slow. I need this builder to hurry up. Okay, let's just speed up time for a sec. There we go. That works for me. Just get this So, off okay, while they're all working, okay, you're like, there's this steel wall that's out here. Can you, like, can they dismantle that and get the steel yep. out of it or no? Oh, okay. So if you go to Architects and go to Orders, you've got Deconstruct. And you can de deconstruct anything, basically, with that. And that is a good way to oh, get I some materials oh. should you need them. Okay, cool. All right. There's also cancel as well, which you can use to tell them, oh, well, I've just selected loads of stuff to mine. If you go to cancel, you can go, nope, don't do it now. It's oh, okay. okay. Okay, so nearly there. Oh, we've uh, got to nighttime. We haven't given them any beds. Oh, oops. So That's a bit of a uh, problem. If we go though. to furniture, and we can see under furniture, we've got sleeping spots. And they're basically, you don't have to build them, you just place them, and that tells them you can sleep there. I don't think it gives them any better of a night's sleep than just sleeping anywhere randomly, but it does mean that you're focusing them to stay in somewhere rather than just outside. We're in a okay. map that's not very cold, but you will have to consider them getting too cold and getting hypothermia should that kind of occurrence occur. I mean, you can be in a hot biome, but get a cold snap, which takes it down to like minus 30 degrees or something ridiculous. So that's centigrade. Oh, okay. So a sleeping spot... So they can put in sleeping spots and they'll just, like, sleep on the ground? <laughs> yeah, it's basically oh. telling them to sleep on the ground here. So I've, I've put three in this cave. I see. Um, it basically, yeah, it just sort of uh, designates them where to sleep on the floor. We can build beds soon. It's just uh, better to build rooms for them. They'll be sure. fine on the floor for, for, to start with. They've got the optimistic um, mood boost at the moment. We didn't get to that, actually. Needs, uh, if you select one of the characters and go to needs... You'll see how much food, how much sleep they need, how oh, much yeah. fun they've had recently, and then all of the things <laughs> that have affected their mood in the last two days or so. Oh, not very comfortable. Yeah. Okay. But they have very low expectations because it's the start of the game, which kind of negates all of the bad ones to start with, so you don't have to worry too much about them okay. sleeping rough and stuff to begin with. Eventually, they will start needing. Okay, so like time. Raven, even though there's a sleeping area down here, Raven just like passed out up here yeah, in the storage. Yeah, she was asleep before we placed them, so. Oh, was she? Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Okay, so everything's built now. Uh, excuse the bang. Oh, that's fine. Um, let's just see the roof situation. Everything is roofed. And now if we put our mouse over inside the cave, we can see it says indoors now. And if we select some food, it doesn't have anything saying it's deteriorating. Perfect. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because it's now, all closed off, so, okay. Yeah, that's basically our storage area now. And obviously we can mine the walls out and make it bigger. So, right, tell them to mine a bit more of this. But, yes, we need food. Even though we have food, we don't want to just rely on that, obviously. we That's emergency food. Sure. So, if you click on wildlife at the bottom... Uh huh. Oops. That my shows. Mouse is going wacko. That shows oh a list of every wild animal currently on the map. Oh. Okay. And you see the grizzly bears and the cougar have got like that predator symbol, like the fox head on yes. the list. Yes. Now, always be wary of these because these animals are crafty and they will wait for one of your animals to be just far away enough from anybody else and then they'll pounce and they'll eat it. It's so clever the way they do it. They wait and they wait until everybody's far away and then they'll go in and they'll eat one of your newly born pup, pu uh, puppies or something. And it's like wow. tragic. Like, yeah! <laughs> oh gosh. Wow, that's but then brutal. That's, that's what predators do. True, that is true. Stalkers. But yes, yeah, so um, we need to basically get food on the go. So we need a butcher's table, a campfire, and uh, someone to go hunting, basically. Um, now, if we look at animals under the animals tab, 
we see uh -huh. that Raven has a bond with the three Timberwolves. Yes. This is a very good thing. Okay. And what's her shooting skill? Uh, four. So, yeah, she's got some work to do on her shooting. But, yeah, she could be our hunter. So, because she has a bond with those three dogs, they will go out hunting with her. So, if anything decides... I think any animal can decide it wants to attack back, but there's a different percentages of how likely they are. So things like rats and squirrels are not likely to fight back. Um, in fact, rats and hares never fight back, it says here. It's like a percentage next to their details. But uh, things like grizzly bears are a lot more likely to go, hang on, I'm not having this, I'm going to eat you. So, yeah, if you've got three dogs with you, it means they've got a much better chance of surviving if something decides to want to eat one of your hunters. Sure, okay. But uh, what is Raven doing? Oh, they're asleep at the moment. But yeah, you'll notice the robot's just cracking on. Uh, so yeah, let's place down... This looks like a cool little area here, I think, for like a yeah. kitchen-y sort of thing. Okay. So let's put a roof. Um, I'm going to build roof area Okay. over there. So this will be a bit of a shell. So we'll put some walls around it. So I'm going to steel wall like that. And we'll have a door here and a door here. Now, because you built the walls, did, does that automatically get a roof on it? Or no, you have to Once, actually yeah. add a roof after it's built. Once they finish building the walls, uh, they normally always build a roof as well. Oh, okay. Unless you tell them not to. All right. Um, so we need to get a butcher's table, which is what you would use to. Oh, turn I see. Yeah, animal. Reese. Reese is building, and so therefore it's making the roof. I have the roof toggle on. That's very mm. cool. That is very mm. cool. So the butcher's table, uh, it will turn animal corpses into raw meat, and it will also turn raw meat and vegetables into kibble. I think it does something else as well. I can't remember. But uh, generally, you want to keep your butcher's table in a separate room from your cookers to prevent um, infections. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you have it, I've heard, if you have it in the same room, you're more likely to get food poisoning from the food. Sure. Yeah, cross-contamination so, and all. Yeah, we'll put a separation wall in to uh, just help prevent that. So if we go there and there. I'm going to mine out the wall a bit. Um, Uh-oh. What's that? I don't know. Something's making some noise. Oh, it's the Mega Sloth. They're actually harmless. They look kind of evil, but it's not actually ours. It's a wild one, but uh, they're okay. Okay. Their fur is quite valuable, actually. Um, right, so we just need them to hurry up. Oh, yeah, we need to put down a fire because we have no source of power yet you can use campfires instead to cook food so I've placed a campfire down so we just need to wait for that to uh, to be made okay but um, let's speed up time a little bit let's see if anyone else could possibly do some construction trouble is if they've got a low <laughs> construction skill they uh, uh. mess it up and waste two, resources. Two cows uh, were very close to each other with hearts, so... Ah, they're mating. We, we, yes. That was hilarious. So she probably get pregnant and uh, have to go on housing benefit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you have to be careful with pregnant animals, obviously. If they go through any kind of like, trauma or starvation, they can have miscarriages, so to be uh, wary of that as well. There's no... Um, babies in, as in people babies though, so you don't have to worry about that. Even though they still try and make them, I can tell you that. <laughs> they have like a mood bonus one morning. You're like, why the hell is he in such a good mood? Mood bonus, got some loving. It's like, oh, okay, that's why you're so happy. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, if they, if they become attached to each other, like, uh, you know, like fiancés or what have you, um, they want to sleep together, so you have to give them a double bed. And if they don't, if they are made to sleep in separate beds, they get a negative mood bonus from it. 
But if oh, they're allowed yes. to sneak together, then they'll get a positive move bonus for it. Huh, makes but sense. And if if one of them cheats on them, then that the victim will have like a very bad negative um, mood penalty for quite a long time, like weeks sometimes. Wow. Or if, if somebody's like like some like a someone was really attached to a dog and the dog got killed, they could be devastated about it for weeks and have sure. mental breakdowns and end up dying because of it. Hmm. It can be quite dramatic. It really can be. So, um, when we're mining general walls that aren't materials, they will sometimes leave these blocks. Okay. And these are very ugly. Let me show you the beauty meter, actually. At the bottom right, with all these ticks and crosses, the middle one at the bottom that says toggle beauty display, the little yep. face put your mouse now inside this room you'll see all these numbers oh yeah so if, if a pawn is stood there where your mouse is that's the beauty that they can see from that position you'll see it's right. minus 1.1 see that the floor is a bit ugly you see that these rocks are very ugly minus nine right and any dirt also will um, have defects in that way but if you've got things like art sculptures carpet um things like that then it'll be boosted up so you can have rooms that are like gloriously beautiful and stuff like that um and if you put it in here and in the cave it's even worse it's sort of one point minus 1.7 because oh my gosh uh, negative 31s yeah we've got all sorts that's blood i think that's causing that oh. and um yeah uh that, that's very useful to know oh yeah how sure your, is how your okay. base is affecting people so if you find oh, that's cool big, you start putting pla plants and flowers and stuff around it just cheers the place up a bit huh. so yeah and also if they try and move over a square with these blocks it slows them right down so we need them to haul them but we need a stockpile for them which is going to be our junk stockpile or our dumping stockpile so, okay so where you got the stockpile zone before there should be one next to it called dumping stockpile which is exactly the same it's just preset yep. with dumping kind of preferences Okay. So they'll only they'll only take things that are rubbish there, like slag and stone chunks and corpses. So because that area is going to be particularly ugly, I generally yeah. put it somewhere like somewhere out back of the over way, here, yeah. maybe. Okay. Yeah. There's like right. alien that can invade, and if you have an alien corpse and they see that, it really affects them. It's really ugly for them. Oh, I don't know how big. How big do we need this? Uh, fairly big, I'd say, like a a, a fair like chunk. Eight by nine. Does that sound pretty good? I mean, that pretty much uh, takes up that whole yeah, area. We can always expand it and build new ones. So, yeah, that's okay. fine for now. Um, so, yeah, we need, now need to tell them to haul. Right. So, if we double-click on it, it will select everything on the screen of that type and then haul things. Now, whenever someone is hauling and they are close to it, they will then take it to the stockpile zone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just pulling that up so I can see. Okay. Or, but since you double click, like, does that mean they're going to haul all of these that are all out here outside too? Uh, yes. If you now click haul, it will select all of those to haul, which you don't want. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Okay. What you could do is zoom in so it only has the ones that you want to have uh, on the yeah, screen. Oh, yeah, of course. So then, it, then double click yes, and it will only yes, select yes. those. Yeah. Very handy, that is. Okay, I see. But we can turn these stone chunks into stone blocks with a stone cutting bench, which you can then use for construction and for selling and all sorts. So um, that's quite handy. So we'll continue the game, go at normal speed. So we need... <laughs> Raven is all in that big old rock. She's like, hey, I got this. Yeah. So I'm going to put a couple of little uh, torch lamps down, because they don't like being in darkness, especially when they're working. Ah. And also we're going to put some floors down. We've got some wood, so... In fact, no, we use concrete because it's cheaper. Even yeah. though concrete takes steel to make. <laughs> that's one kind of thing about it. It's a little bit... Mm, okay. I use yeah, all my steel that's... to make a concrete floor. Right. Even though, There's you know, you one. could have just used wood. Cause, yeah. You know. <laughs> but, hey, we'll take it. Have we actually got any wood? So, you'll see at the top left... Uh -huh. You've got a list of all your stuff. Are they drop-down lists or just one big list? I just have one big list. You can change that at the bottom right to be categories or one big list, because eventually that one big list will be off the screen. So I think it's the first one at the bottom left that selects it to drop-down lists, so you have categories of stuff. Yep. I have, I usually have that. And uh, if you have the bottom one, on, the bottom one opened, is it changing it for you as well? 
or is yours independent? Uh, no, I, I don't see what you're doing. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, it's just good uh, to be able to keep an eye on what you've got. Because if you're telling them to build a load of wooden floors or something and then like wondering why they're not doing it, then you can see, oh, it's because I have no wood. Or there's wood somewhere that's forbidden from being used or something like that. Right, so we have our butcher's table. So let's look at bills. So any production table uh, will have a button when you select it that says bills. Okay. Yep. And this is basically specifying what you want them to do here. So if we add a bill to butcher creature. Butcher creature. Do yep. yep. Do and then X. Now it, with the default specification is to do it once. So now somebody, whenever they come to this table, will grab one creature, one animal corpse, and turn it into meat, and then that'll be it. The bill is finished. So you could also tell her to do it like five times, and then it'll be finished. But you can also do until you have X, and say oh, yeah. 10. And then as long as you have 10 um, meat in storage, um, they, they won't come and do this again. But as soon as it goes below 10, they'll then, oh, we need more now. Or you can just say do forever, which is what I do for butchering creatures. Just whenever there's animal corpses, they will always need to be butchered. So sure. if you come to butchering, just just do it. Get the meat, put it in the freezer. So for, for that instance, yeah, um, butcher creature is uh, good on forever. But then we can also add make kibble. And we don't want to do that forever. We want to do that until we have a certain supply. And usually about 200 is good. But because you don't want to click the plus button until you get to 200, yeah. if you click details, it'll bring up uh, the ability to just type in 200. You see the, the, the window? Yep. Uh, so under there, it says look everywhere. You can choose a specific stockpile zone for them to take stuff from. So you could say, I want you to make kibble, but I only want you to make it out of stuff that comes from this particular stockpile. Or you can say um, from a certain distance. So within this area, you can make kibble out of stuff that's only from this area. It's basically oh, being yeah. more specific. Okay. Um, then you could tell them where to take it. So take the best stockpile or drop on the floor. So that's a thing to think about. Because if they're making something that's very quick and they're doing it over and over again, you could tell them to just drop it on the floor. Otherwise, every time they make one, they'll then go off to the stockpile and put it away and then come back and make another one. Whereas right. you could have someone just making them and making them and dropping them on the floor and somebody else coming along and picking them up. So you're getting more production done, basically, but you're using two people. So that's something to consider as well. But the final important thing about this window is where it says pause when satisfied. So, for instance, say we're talking about food so let's set up food so if we click on the campfire which is our temporary cooker for now and under bills we'll cook a simple meal and we want to do it until we have 10 but hang on hang on the... i got lost sorry on the what? campfire if you click bills campfire where'd that go in, oh, oh campfire uh, yeah, yeah 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 campfire yeah. bills okay sorry and um, then details. so we want to do okay. it we want them to we want them to cook out of our food supply. I'll just pause, actually. Uh, we want them to cook out of our food supply until we have at least 10 meals. And then as soon as we have 10 meals available, that's it. You don't have to worry about cooking anymore. But the thing is, with that mechanic, is as soon as somebody eats one meal, then it will trigger it again, and that person will stop what they're doing and go back and cook that final meal and make 10. Right. So what okay. we want to do is under details, where it says the amount, where it says pause when satisfied... If we tick mm -hmm. that and then unpause at two or three, for instance, now that person will cook 10 meals, put them in storage, and then she won't be asked to come back to cook more meals until that stack of meals has gone down to three. Right. So okay. That, so she won't just come straight back as soon as one of them's taken. That is one thing that used to be quite annoying about this game until they put this in. So that's very helpful because it can be really annoying trying to get them into a routine when they're basically just changing their mind all day, having to come back and do one thing and then go back and do one bit of that thing, then come back again and cook a meal. It's just, ah. Uh, when you have a limited amount of people, that can be really tough. Yes. So, right. 
I know we're moving quite fast here, but uh, there's oh no 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 that's quite fine. A bit we're, uh, I was trying to see. We're, oh, I can't. See. We're doing right to start with here. I think we've got a good little little start going. Uh, so next thing, now that we have a butcher's table and the means of cooking stuff, we need a, a place to store some food. And that will entail power, a air conditioning system, and its own room. So, okay. Wow. Uh, just think about productive way of doing this. So we could build into the hill, but it does mean mining it all out, where we could just build a room outside. So I think we'll do that. Okay. So we'll build a fridge, basically, like a walk-in freezer. Oh, okay. So we'll have it connected to the butcher room and the main kitchen. So if we say... Like this. Uh-huh. And then a door here and a door here. So this will be our fridge. So you can access it from the cookers and you can access it from the butchers. So we'll keep corpses and meat in here. And I think we should probably have another door out here so they don't have to come through every time to put stuff in there from outside. Okay, so let's let them build that. So now we're going to need power. So if we click on the power button under architect, you can see we have these wood fired generators, which is exactly that. Okay, so hang on. One I got down. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I, I got distracted because we're like in the cow's chicken area. So I was curious. I guess once you build the walls, then they'll work around that or whatever, right? Okay. Uh, well, uh, they'll still want to go in. So what we'll need to do is go to zone, clear allowed area, then click cows, and just take a chunk out. There we so go. Now they'll, they'll <laughs> just stay away. <laughs> Stay out of the stay out of the fridge, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you you have to worry about that if you have like crops growing, you have to keep them off of them because they will just graze on. Them oh yeah, the sure, yeah, they'll eat the crops. And whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I mean, sometimes that's fine if you've got a huge farm and loads of animals. Well, not so many animals, then you don't have to worry so much. It just keeps them happy. But yeah, if you're fighting to keep starvation out of your colony, then it's not a good thing. <laughs> um, Right, okay. so now we've, we've put down a wood-fired generator, which they can fuel with wood, essentially. Okay. Uh, but we will need to tell them to chop down some trees to keep our wood situation up. So if we right. go to orders under architect, and then there are three different kinds of plant cutting. Cut plants means literally anything on that spot, whether it be tree, bush, grass, any plant, just get rid of it. Harvest is... Only because you can like drag a box and it will select sure. things that are ready to harvest. But only things that are ready to harvest. So if you put over a field that's half grown, it won't select anything. But if any of it is ready to harvest, it will then tag it to be then harvested by a plant cutter. Okay. But then you've got chop wood, which is similar, but it's for trees. It won't sure. specify to cut down any trees that aren't worth cutting down. So I've selected all of these trees here to be cut down so we can get some wood. Okay. We look at the work priority. We've only got one person, I would say, willing to do it. They're not even willing to do it. We've told them to do it, but yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like it, but they'll do no. it. And I don't think they'll get any XP for plant cutting. For basic jobs, I don't think there's any... You don't get any experience and level up from that. So we need to hopefully come across a new colonist that can do that kind of thing a bit better. There yes, is. Believe me, within within like two or three game years, we might have eight colonists. This uh, there was an ibex doe or several that evidently I don't know. <laughs> they got a yeah, problem, kind of, man. Yeah, they're they're bleeding all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, man! <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yes, because we shot one and we let it bleed out for two days. Oh well, that'll do it. Over here now. <laughs> oh, I see that. If you click on health. See, it had uh, gunshot wounds from assault rifle. Oh, I, I shouldn't be laughing, but that's got to be one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> Man, there are some <laughs> seriously dark yet hilarious things that can happen in this. Like you can have like a tribe of cannibals who like oh recruit gosh. people in and then like abduct them and euthanize them and eat them or harvest their organs and sell them on the black market. Holy cow, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some people play this game very dark, and there's like mods to make it so you have vampires and stuff, and like proper gothica orientated stuff for this game as well. 
I had I had that, no yeah. idea the rabbit hole I was falling into here. Same here. <laughs> it really is that, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god! Well, eloquently put, it is definitely a rabbit hole. Um, yeah, you see this uh, geyser or geyser you got here? You yes. Can, you search geothermal um, power plants and put one on there. Ah, well, we haven't looked at the research bar. If you just click cool. the research button, um, you can see all the stuff that we can go through. Until you research, mm. until you build a research bench. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so I'm assuming green, that's what we already know, right? Yeah. And is the number, like, is that our skill level? What is that? I don't know what that is. The number is the, the amount of time it takes to research ah, it. Ah, 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 ah. Oops. <laughs> Except when it saves, everything disappears. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Drug production. There you go. Beer yeah, brewing. Yeah, have a look at the... We will need them to make um, medicine. Um, you can grow herbal medicine, which is, is quite good, but it's only 33% as effective as normal medicine. But uh, normal medicine is generally quite expensive. And then you can get glitter world medicine, which I think is 150% effective. Uh, that that's very expensive. But yeah, if you've got someone in dire need of urgent medical help, that's the stuff to use. Sure. Okay. But yeah, you can like perform operations on people, like give them prosthetics. You can harvest certain body parts, and like if they get, like I was saying earlier, if they've had their leg blown off or something, they can't move. They just get left in bed, and you just have to feed them. But wow! So you can put televisions and stuff down for them to watch while they're living a life of incarceration. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, like man. widescreen TVs and everything. <laughs> That's, oh. You can wow. like make really nice rec rooms of like pit, uh, pool tables and yeah, all sorts ruby oh. statues. And <laughs> it's pretty crazy. That's so cool. yeah, you can see there we've got our power plant place, but there's no fuel. So right, eventually someone will come along and fuel that. Um, but yes, we need to look at temperature under Architect. You see there we've got our campfire, passive cooler, which is a wood fueled cooling device. It only cools down to 17 degrees. So what that's useful for is in a heat wave when it's 40 to 50 degrees and everybody's getting heat stroke, you could place these down and they'll cool the room down. Oh, okay. But for a fridge, we will need to use a cooler. Okay. Now this thing can cause issues or it can be very helpful. So if you, on the mouse, you can see it's got a blue square and a red square next to it. Right. That's the hot and cold side. Obviously, you want the hot side on the outside of the fridge and not the other way around like I've done before. <laughs> and if you put it down and the hot side is into another room, that can cause fires and heat strokes if it's a hot area. But oh. if you're in like a, a, a tundra biome or the ice sheet, that can actually be a source of heat for your colonists but here we want it vented outside it's nice and warm in this biome so i place i think it's going to be two we'll need for this size room they will then remove the wall and put in these coolers okay like you would doors except coolers yeah and right. um they uh they haven't put a roof on it yet oh it's because they haven't built the last section of wall because there's a tree there Oh, Raven's we just should. hanging out like, look, I'm trying to do this. Yes, just <laughs> give me a chance, will you? <laughs> there we go. Right, so ah, another uh, one we need to sort out is the dogs area. So okay. generally I let the dogs go wherever they want. Oh, just pause it. I let the dogs go where they want, except for the fridge and people's bedrooms. Sure. We don't have to worry about bedrooms yet, but uh, right, okay. so the way to do that without having to select the entire map apart okay. from the areas you want to go in, mm -hmm. if you uh, if we go to restrict again and then manage areas, and if you click new area and make one called dogs, okay, okay, right, and then um, close, and then go to zones and expand allowed area for dogs i'll place down around the hey you know what it... dogs can be trained to haul so it can be useful for them to drop off food and stuff not that you'd really want your dogs to carry food in their mouth and then you cook it and eat it but... 
Sure. That why doesn't not? that doesn't affect the in this game sort of thing. So I'll allow. It's just you don't want them walking through your kitchen all the time because they leave dirt in there, and that's that's what causes food poisoning. So sure. I'm going to select an area, what looks like currently for them to only be in the kitchen, which it currently does. Right. And we don't we don't want them in the bedroom, so we'll select that. That's our bedroom for now, as horrible uh -huh. as that must be. Um, <laughs> and then we'll go back to restrict and manage areas, and then you can click invert. So now that will invert. So it's ah, everywhere in the map yes. apart from there. Yes. So that's a quick, quick way of doing that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a, there's a weird, that's funny. There's a weird little, uh, just outside of the refrigerator, there's like this one little strip where the dogs aren't allowed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That was, that was when I, I was about to choose the fridge. That's when I realized, oh, actually, there. That's funny. That's hilarious. Ah, oh, or leave it out. You know, dogs can go over it. Not this, not this strip right here. No dogs allowed right here. That's cool. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Right. So yeah, we're just waiting for them to finish off this room and put a roof on it. Oops. Wrong key. And so. The, uh, oh yeah, we've got uh, a visitor. We do. Yeah. If you see. Oh, I see that visitors. Yeah. Location. Yep. Sometimes they have stuff to trade. Sometimes they don't. But that's Jump from a neutral colony location. that are completely indifferent to us. They're not. They're not against oh. us or with us well, in the slightest. And it says they're visitors, but where are they in relation to us? Oh, I see. They're kind of south you, east. Yeah. If you click jump to location on the notification. Oh yeah. If you get rid of a notification, you can click history at the bottom, and then click messages, and it comes up with everything you've ever been notified with. And from there, you can click um, visitors, jump to location, and it will take you straight there. So. Like to the southwest of us, mm. there's like, I don't know, some kind of a mountain thing or something, but there's like this whole like already bricked mm -hmm. out, walled out yep. place. That's pretty cool. Every map has <coughs> one of these. And this is, as soon as one of your colonists will get near it, you'll get, you'll get a message. And it's called uh, Ancient Danger or something. Oh. Now, inside there is an event. I'm not going to divulge it to you. I'll let you just No, no, it. no. That's fine. Yeah. That's There's fine. an event in there. That's cool. And it's okay. not always bad, but it usually is. Sometimes <laughs> good. Good, good to know. <laughs> yeah. You can cheat and you can just load the game after you've found out what's in there. But there is a game mode that's called Commitment Mode, which does allow you, just prevent you from loading the game ever, which is the full way to play the game. We're not playing it like that because we're learning, so... I'm, I'm for that. Yeah, you can just send somebody in there, see what happens, and then just load back to before you tested it. Like, now I know I'm never going in that room. <laughs> or, right, oh my God, right. get in there now. We need to get what's in there. So this spot here where they refuse to build this thing, is there... Oh, wait, wait we're paused. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. So these people that are down here... Oh, they're, they're just coming. passing through. Yeah, I see. They're coming. But yeah, sometimes they'll just hang around your um, base and you can like... Uh... In fact, you can do all sorts with them. I've never been horrible to them, but you can attack them and nick all their stuff. You can enslave them and then harvest their organs, or you can imprison them and recruit them into your own... Or try to recruit them into your own colony. Oh, you could have like wow. a caravan of like eight people and ten cows full of gear, like a trade merchant, and you could like just ambush them and have a huge battle and just like see what you can get out of it basically <laughs> it really is like your oyster this game you can be as evil or as good as you want what it reminds is... me of black and white did you ever play black and white no uh -uh. oh that was like it was a god game in when was that around it's like 2000 2001 and like you could, you were a god, and you were looking after this like village of followers. It was like tiny little people, and you could like pick them up and throw them. We could like pick up rocks and throw them into the town. It would just destroy all the buildings. It was so good. <laughs> and, like, as you played the game, as you went along, like depending on whether you were doing evil stuff or good stuff, uh, would it would change your hand? Like your mouse cursor was a 3D hand, and your hand would either get brighter and gl more glowing, or start going red and get black veins and stuff that game was way ahead of its time wow it really yeah. was it was it, so many people want a remake of it 
It's brilliant. I'm surprised you've not heard of it, actually. I, thought uh, that might uh, be I, 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 I was going to say, I, I, actually, I, I do remember... Uh, I, I, I remember the name of it. I just don't remember... I couldn't remember what it was about. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a good one. So different from anything else. I wasn't doing a whole okay. lot of gaming then. Fair enough. So we're getting our first um, cooler built. Oh yes, we actually need to tell the dogs to actually be in the dogs area. So I'll, I'll assign them that. Oh, one of our dogs is called Extreme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and one's called Kenya. Yeah, I can see Kenya's Korean. down here. Yeah, Kenya's currently sleeping at the butcher block. Way to go, <laughs> dog. Oh yes, we can put animal sleeping spots down. So in furniture, where the sleeping spot is, there's also animal sleeping spots. This is important actually, because if an animal gets hurt, they cannot be healed unless they go to our animal sleeping spot. Oh, okay. If they get if they get hurt, that's the first place they'll go. But you, I before had an issue where I was like, they're injured. I've got medicine. I can't heal them, but they have to have uh, a, a sleeping spot for them to go to to enable a uh, pawn to then go and heal them. So I'm going to put a bunch down in here, I think, for the dogs. And uh, we'll just put some up here for the cows, providing they are actually able to reach that. Oh, chickens use them as well. Now, when you down. put them down, do you, are you specifying what goes in there? Uh, what, the sleeping spots? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Any animal can can reserve that spot to sleep. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm just gonna build a little wall. Oh no! No 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 no! We run out of steel. For now, we don't want to use that steel. Cancel those. Uh, we'll just use wood. So yeah, I just want somewhere warm and safe for them for when they're injured. Sure. So we'll just build a little shack for them. And make sure their areas can reach them. Nope, they cannot. There we go. That's fine. And dogs. Yep, they can. Okay. Looking good. Get some wood chopped as well. That's handy. And finally, our fridge is done. And now, because he's building the last block of the of the room, that will now tell them this is a room. So cut down that tree and put a roof on it, as you can see he's doing. Oh, yep. But um, also, we need to select our coolers. So if we double click on them, so it selects them both. You'll see that there's temperature gauge buttons. And currently, it's set to 21 degrees or something, or 10 degrees. Target temperature 20. Oh, yeah, degrees. I see. So okay. Turn them both down. So if okay. you turn, actually, you've got them both selected. Put turn them down to like minus nine, so minus ten three times or something. Wait, what? That's it. Click minus ten again. That lowers it by ten, and then one more time. There we go. So now those heaters or coolers will fight to keep this room at minus nine degrees Celsius. Okay, but, but you said somewhere it told you what the temperature was, right? I don't. Yeah. See, if you hold it? your mouse over it on the right hand side. You'll see it says unroofed, 12 degrees. Oh, sorry, on the coolest, on the bottom left, it says target temperature. I don't see that. Just paused it. Um, have you got both huh. selected? Oh, yeah, select just one. That's oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm with you, I'm with you. No, it's, yeah, so target temperature. target minus temperature nine is minus nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what we want. So, okay. and if you put your mouse in the middle of the room, you'll see on the right-hand side... The actual temperature currently because it's still yes. unroofed. unroofed yeah. yeah yeah okay cool oh, look at this we've been left a gift <laughs> by these With two them. guys a, a wooden war mask oh we've got to, we've got to make the robot wear that <laughs> uh, i don't i did didn't see where that, that is did you not get the notification oh yes 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 i see over on oh, the okay, side cool. okay. i was thinking maybe only i'm getting them now or something oh no 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 i see uh yeah it, it's plain as day i'm just being Stupid. Okay, no worries. Yeah, there's a lot on the screen, a lot of different places you got to look and stuff. So <laughs> yeah. it takes a while to get used to. But yeah, I've told Reese to wear the mask. Oh, that's hilarious. 
Oh, I see on. that. Yeah, and the little <laughs> icon at the top. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's okay. hilarious. So whilst cool. he's uh, whilst whilst he's building the room, we're going to put a stockpile zone down, and you're going to allocate it to be different from a normal one. So I'll just pause it for a sec. Okay. So now if you click the stockpile zone in the fridge that I've placed. Uh huh. And then go to storage. Okay. Oh, that's in the bottom. Yep. Now you want to clear all. Okay. So now that, that specified everything in the game to not be placed there. Sure. Um, priority, we want to be anything above normal, really. I normally go one step at a time. So we'll go for prepared. Uh, sorry, preferred. Okay. So now, say that you didn't just clear all and this was the same as the main stockpile we have over there. They'd fill up this stockpile we've just placed because it's preferred, and then they'd fill up the other one because it's okay. second priority. But we don't want it to be just anything. We want it to be food, right. specifically meat and uh, animal corpses. So if you go to uh, raw food, if you drop that list down and select meat, mm -hmm. actually drop that list down as well. So have it so meat is selected so all the meat's ticked, but sure. untick, untick human meat. Oh, because we're yes. civilized people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if um, if people if pawns see human meat or human leather and they're not cannibals, they get a minus a negative mood bonus. It freaks them out. I would imagine so. That that'll do it. Which is it's just good because that, that yeah is a thing surely. <laughs> so yeah, raw food, meat except human meat, and then scroll to the bottom where it says corpses, and select animal corpses. So anything that we hunt will be placed in the freezer as well. Okay. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Saving actually resets yes. the music as well. I was getting into oh. that then. I was going to say, yeah, it resets the music. <laughs> it kills the menus. It does all that stuff. Yeah, so. that's a shame. But it's not vanilla, so can't moan too much. No, that's true. Uh, right, so yeah, that's that okay. ready. Apart from the fact the floor so... is still just dirt. Would you like to put a concrete floor in, sir? Uh, I can do that, and then I will have to wrap things up here for today. Oh, okay. Um, we got it. Getting ready to head out. So, okay. So I'm going to. That's architect. Mm -hmm. Floor. Yeah. And I want a concrete floor. And then I just drag where it goes. Yep. Don't mind me. Um, I'm just going to put a floor on you. Fill in the door holes as well, because it doesn't select those. Oh, so I should actually go. Okay, so I should actually do it this way. Yeah, you can do it across. There we just Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, now they've got a floor in there, and that'll be a fairly adequate storage for food. But yeah. Okay, so the coolers literally just make it cool. That's that's why we tried to do the fridge mod, but it. For whatever reason, we well, have two different versions or no, whatever, the, right? The, the, the fridge mod is, uh, it's a, it gives you a one block fridge, which you can store one stack of food in. Oh, oh, oh. Whereas this is good for storing the oh, food. Oh, yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole room. Well. Sure. Yeah. Where okay. the fridge mod gives you fridges to store the finished meals. Where you, you would need this fridge to store the stuff that you make the meals out of, if you know what I mean. Yep. <coughs> cool. Awesome. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, man, we will definitely have to pick this up again because mm. yeah, this is very cool. Stuff. This is, yeah, I was going to say, this is way more in depth than I ever imagined it was going to be. So, mm -hmm. same here. <laughs> that is, oh, that is very, very cool. It's and now, of in. course, you've got me intrigued. I want to know what's going on in the undiscovered building down here. Mm hmm. That's very cool. Awesome. All right, man. Well, I guess I'm going to get off of here and uh, head on down the road. Get on your holes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, man. Okay. So you can just, so like, I guess you have to save it. Or yeah, just... yeah. I'll just save now. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's auto-saved. So again, I can't actually save it from here. So oh, so you have save. to, yeah. So you have to wait till the auto-save. Yeah. But well, we have one a minute ago, so a bit of annoying. Yeah, yeah, I think it yeah. saved like right before we put in the the floor. So yeah, that's, that's cool. Right. All right. Cool. Awesome, I'll just mate. Go to the main menu and confirm that. 
Server closed.